I don't want to go through life always having to think I'm the worst and, you know, in order to find the, the life in Christ and, and that whole, that whole thing where it sort of requires you to feel really bad or to at least admit, you know, oh, you, you're just sort of nothing and you have nothing. And so that's why you need Jesus. And isn't that such great news? It's like, it's just stopped being good news for me. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming back. If you've been here before or hi, welcome. If you're new, my name is Mickey. I'm a therapist and we talk about therapy things on this channel. Today, we're talking about um, what is a apparently very hotly requested and also very hotly dissected uh, video about Dave and Bethy or Bethany, I suppose. For those of you who don't know, there has been a whole series of events that started with Paul and Morgan releasing a collab with Bethany from Girl Defined that then resulted in a lot of like discourse and apparently like hate comments about how Dave is not a real Christian. So Dave and Bethany decided to sit down on their YouTube channel to address um, <laughs> the fact that Dave has now started deconstructing or um, has been deconstructing apparently. So I've seen y'all asking me to talk about this. We talked about this in an episode of the podcast also, which by the way, if you don't know, we have a podcast that goes up every Thursday and I love it there. So you should go uh, check that out. But we talked about this on the pod that there is, there's some thoughts and feelings that I have <laughs> in regards to making fundamentalist content. Um, so definitely go check that out if you want like an update about the channel. But just to also reiterate here, I made the conscious choice to not talk about the 24 hours with video because Paul and Morgan are in timeout. I don't take kindly to people trying to, first of all, like, what is the word that I'm looking for? I struggled to find the word there for a second, but to like invade, uh, yeah, or like insert themselves into the community that we've all built here. And I also uh, personally think that gray rocking people who have a loose appreciation for the boundaries of others has been like a pretty effective uh, choice for me in like my own interpersonal relationships. So I'm choosing to also do it with people on the internet uh, who again, seem to have a pretty loose appreciation for other people's boundaries. So I made that choice on purpose. Um, and that's also why we're talking about Dave and Bethany today rather than Paul and Morgan. All of that said, we're gonna to talk about this video. It is an hour long, so this is going to be a long one. Grab a snack, make sure that you hydrate yourself, and let's uh, dive in. All right, let's blow the lid off this moment. Babe! I got too much camera smiling in a cute and sexy way when I cursed. <laughs> okay, let's throw the us. Come on. It's third time's a charm. <laughs> <laughs> We've already restarted a couple times because we hate ourselves. <laughs> we were the stiffest grandmas you've we're ever seen in your the life. Grandma. Anyway, I'm not going to act out the grandma. But. We're like not stiff people, but we've tried to film this like three times and uh, we're not I, ourselves at all. We're no. just like this. We're like... And, and then Paul and Morgan came and how was your <laughs> I'm locked thir 13 layers in my mind castle. Yes. I, just... I'm sorry, I have no space in here. Okay, that's really... Just real quick, I want to address the fact that these two seem like more more like people um, in this video than I've ever seen them appear online, which is just noteworthy. We're going to have a greater conversation about that later, but just put a pin in that. We'll come back to it. Are we filming? We don't ever film together. Ah, we need to film more. We're so bad at this, but we'll get, we'll get that. Okay, this was when we went out on our very first date ever. Well, my dream, I told you this, and this might be really, really forward. Mm -hmm. On our very first date ever, mm -hmm. I told you about like how I thought we were like really special and unique because we were really good friends at that point and how I thought we could have like a YouTube channel or do something like that. And we've dabbled a we little have bit. tried <laughs> along the way a little bit. But it's still my dream. Like that's my dream to do like YouTube or social media with you. Mm -hmm. So anytime we get to, even if we don't do it that often, so we have to kind of get back. <laughs> This is so yeah, fun. Yeah, we have me. to get our, our YouTube legs back. You just have so much to offer the world, and I love I love how we are together. And I feel like this side of me is so much more of like my real self, like the twenty four hours with, and um, because I'm not teaching like so much of what people see of me hmm. on the Girl Defined channel, and it might be just like change it, but it's like <laughs> <laughs> so don't do it. It's like a different vibe. It's like teaching. I'm you know it's like I'm a mentor. I'm a big sister. It's a different vibe, but this is really fun because it's just like whenever we are doing stuff, it's more like sharing our life. And I love it. So just really quick, again, I want to note for the class that this interaction is like probably one of the sweeter things that we've ever seen them say to each other. Like this statement of like, I think you have a lot to offer the world and I just really enjoy doing this thing with you is inherently a really sweet thing, right? Like we've talked a lot on the channel about in healthy relationships, it's not just about the things that your partner does for you, right? We just wrapped talking about Love is Blind on our Friday live streams, which if you don't know, by the way, come hang out for those, they're a uh, wild time. But the 
language that people use on that show a lot is like, I love you because you make me feel good or because you are what I think a good wife should be, right? And it's like rarely, if ever, a like, I think that you're very valuable or like, I love the way that you are. Or I love the way that you treat people or I think that you're intelligent and kind and creative and cool. Rarely, if ever, is it that. And this is kind of that. Like essentially what she just said to him is that like she appreciates these things about him specifically and not just about the ways that he like provides service to her, which is, again, noteworthy in my opinion. Okay, before we go any further into the video, I do wanna pause and say thank you to this week's sponsor, which is Dipsy. We've worked with Dipsy before and I love them. I'm excited to work with them again. I get questions about my self-care routine all the time. And one of my favorite ways to show myself a little bit of love is to schedule myself a Dipsy date. Uh, so I'm excited to talk to you about all of the things that Dipsy has to offer. For those of you who don't know, Dipsy is an app that is filled with hundreds of sexy and short audio stories that's perfect for some spicy me time. My favorite thing about Dipsy is that the stories are also designed by women for women. And they also have a huge, library of immersive soundscapes that range from everything from Greek gods to fairy smut to vacation flings or steamy hookups. So Dipsy has something for every mood. New content also gets added every week and they also have things like sleep stories and wellness sessions or even sexy written stories. So in between listening to your faves over and over again, you can also add something new. Dipsy is definitely my go-to place to relax and unwind with myself and I really think it will be yours too. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Mickey. That's D-I-P-S-E a stories.com slash Mickey, dipsystories.com slash Mickey. Thank you so much to Dipsy for sponsoring this week's video. Let's go ahead and hop back in. All right, with that, well, let's get into our experience with, what did you say? <laughs> it's like, let him know, convince him. <laughs> oh, convince oh, you want them to, to convince me. Let's get into this. 24 hours with Paul and Morgan. They were here for the weekend and uh, nice. we took a heck ton of footage. They took a heck ton of footage. Oh my gosh. Yeah, which, okay, shout out to Paul and Morgan. They were awesome and they did such a good job facilitating and yeah. our conversations and running around with the camera and being very uh non-invasive about it and they were very respectful to all of the random stipulations yeah. about you know don't film our kids and you don't know film or, our neighborhood don't film yeah our so yeah we wanted to kind of you know keep, keep some of that and and uh keep it more focused on conversations yeah. and things like that but it wasn't original really quick this is just a nitpicky note i wasn't even gonna say anything just the bar is in hell that like <laughs> not violating our basic privacy of like filming our children without their or our consent and not filming our address so that people can find us. It's like, wow, they're so good with boundaries. Like, okay. Really gonna, like I wasn't going to be in it yeah. nearly that I much originally. Do you want to <laughs> say what it was going to be? I don't want to. I'll just quick, crack, crack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not my video. It was, it was supposed to be a girl to find. It was supposed yeah. to be like Kristen and Bethany 24 hours with girl to find long story short, we couldn't make the schedules work like even literally over the months because Kristen is an extremely busy person and she homeschools her two boys full time. They're just extremely busy. So we busy. literally could not make the three of our schedules work together. Yeah. And so it ended up being like, hey, we'll come stay with Bethany um, and we'll film your life. And then maybe we'll be able to see Kristen a little bit, which they were only really able to see her for that little bit when we were doing the podcast stuff. So it just kind of like morphed. It really wasn't supposed to be a video about like Bethany with Girl Defined and then Dave, but it kind of became a video truly about me and then my life with you. So, yeah. okay, there was just like some chit chatting about the Paul and Morgan video that's not particularly relevant to the stuff that I want to talk to you about today. So, we're just going to fast forward a bit. We're starting with this. And, and I would say the number one benefit is just honesty, just bringing up the sorts of conversations that, um, that we have. But, you know, we hadn't had conversations like we did um, in the video in that topic. We had had very honest conversations in other oh, areas yeah. of our lives. But in that specific topic of specifically like the outward facing Bethany and the world and, and Girl Defined and the critics and all this stuff, we hadn't really gone there for a while like that deeply. Um, because we yeah. know we disagree. Because we know there are some disagreements. And so, so it's, it's like, like, why rehash it? We don't, we haven't ever gotten to the point where we see eye to eye. So it's yeah. like, we know it's just kind of like we agree to disagree. And that encompasses a lot, not just like how we view in that conversation, it was like the haters, but it's like yeah. beliefs, what I do with Girl Define, the stuff I write about, talk about, we've known we don't see eye to eye convictions wise on some of that stuff. So it can just be stressful to like rehash it when you know, like, why are you going to rehash it? We like, we know we don't agree. So like, <laughs> let's just keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, we will rehash it if apparently a, a, a small film crew comes to comes to town. To <laughs> okay, listen, I have mixed opinions about this because in some ways I can hear what they're saying in the sense that like we know that we individually hold different beliefs and values about this particular issue. We don't foresee our own values or beliefs changing. So why continue to have this debate about it uh, when we know that it's just going to end in like a stressful disagreement ultimately? Like I can see that, but then also on the other hand, I do want to 
put it out there. Um, especially for those of you who are struggling with relationships with somebody who like fundamentally disagrees with you about politics or, you know, religion or, or like values and beliefs about life. It is okay for those things to be a deal breaker issue, right? This comes up a lot in regards to politics, especially, and especially like with parent-child relationships or family relationships. It is sometimes the healthiest choice to say that like, we have a healthy relationship outside of this thing. So we're just not going to talk about it. And also sometimes it is like a deal breaking issue and like that's allowed, right? I mostly just want to put that out there for any of you who are feeling like, should I just be like cooler about this? And like, you don't have to be, right? I don't know that I necessarily find it to be like the healthiest choice to say like, we disagree about these fundamental tenets of life, but we just won't talk about them. <laughs> Especially things like whether or not we, you know, see somebody as a human being or somebody as worthy of love and belonging or, you know, as being uh, condemned to eternal hellfire, right? Like those are fairly big issues that I think it's fair for people to put their foot down and say like, we're either going to figure out some kind of middle ground about this or like our relationship does, just doesn't work together. To watch us then we'll react a little bit, which we did. And it was, it was really, yeah. it was, you know, it was good. It brought up a lot of really interesting, good things to, uh, really quick. I forgot that this was happening. Uh, to be clear, I have already watched this, but I watched this while I was playing video games. Um, so I didn't super absorb it all the first time. <laughs> um, but this I think is actually a good example of like what I'm saying, right? Which is that, yes, sometimes having these conversations about issues we fundamentally disagree about will just end in us disagreeing. And like, that's kind of stressful, but it also might end up in you guys finding some kind of way to be closer to one another in like the compromise department. You know what I'm saying? I think there is something to be said for choosing to walk through discomfort or conflict in a relationship with the goal of wanting to be closer to one another, with the goal of wanting to find a greater sense of connection. Um, I think a lot of times we perceive conflict in our culture as an inherently bad thing. That's also a sign that your relationship must be falling apart and that's not true, right? Um, it is entirely possible to choose to walk into conflict resolution because we want to be closer with someone. We just talked about this in the Love is Blind video, which is that a lovely reframe about conflict is that I love you enough to work through this uncomfortable conflict with you rather than just saying, I don't care and I'm walking away from this relationship, right? Or like, I'm just choosing to stay silent and quietly resent you for the rest of our fucking lives. There is something to be said about the fact that it's inherently loving to say, listen, I don't want to fight. I don't want to be in the middle of this conversation that's uncomfy, but I'm doing it because I love you, because I care about you and because I want us to be closer. Like I want us to find some kind of middle ground in the compromise department about this issue because we both feel strongly about it. And like, I want to be with you. So let's find some way forward. So first off, I just want to yeah. say like anyone who's giving Paul Morgan any oh, grief from that Let's talk about video, the grief, the yeah, grief that Paul and Morgan Paul, Like, yo, they came and stayed with us. Like mm. we got a firsthand look at these people and we've known that, like I've, we've been together with them in person <laughs> one other time and we've connected okay. through like now, like as friends long distance because they're just awesome people. But they, like, they're so amazing and they were so kind and genuine and like so full of integrity and like yeah. to their word on everything they said, they gave us the final, you know, like say on anything in the video to like have it removed, whatever. Like they are just so, so awesome. And like as a married couple behind the scenes, it's like we have seen them and they are just so kind to one another. Like Paul is so kind to like taking care of Morgan and Morgan's like so kind to him. They're just an awesome couple. Like we are genuinely yeah. inspired by their marriage and by them. Yeah being here. Yeah, I, mean, I was real quick again, just as a nitpicky note, this is like very, the bar is in hell sort of territory. A husband being loving to his wife, especially like while she's pregnant and has acknowledged that she's like stressed and overwhelmed and anxious and not feeling great to me is not really like husband of the year material. <laughs> Somebody choosing to be respectful of you and like, especially having navigated collabs and things like that, giving somebody an advanced look at the content that you plan to put up and telling them like, of course, I'll take out anything that you don't want in this. Like that's standard fare as far as collaborating is concerned. I, again, I'm not trying to be like a nitpicky asshole, but just for what it's worth, I don't, this is not like a glowing commendation um, about Paul and Morgan's character so much as it is just that like, they weren't assholes, I guess. Inspired by Paul, by the time they left, uh, I was, I was, I had a couple thoughts. One was like, I really like them. Kind of like, I wish they would yeah. stay, that sort of thing. Because I, I thought they were great. We would totally you know, hang out totally with them if they lived here and all this. And I thought, I was particularly inspired by Paul and the way that he treated Morgan with yeah. respect and with care and looked out for her. And, and uh, it just, I liked their dynamic and I liked the, the way they related to each other in a lot of ways. I, yeah. I felt inspired to be a better husband to Bethany, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, anyone who's giving any grief or even like, I don't know, whatever the reels they're posting or things they're saying now, it's like people, I don't know, people just want to find something mm. about it, but we have like nothing but good things to say about, I mean, I think that's sure. Well, I, I'm very positive. 
I'm just yeah. very positive about, yeah, yeah, yeah. about them and about, yeah. After the hard conversation, we've had a couple of hard weeks Yeah. in the sense that like, we've just pressed into a lot of this stuff rather than, um, rather than just like moving yeah. on. We've just like really been like, Hey, let's just, it's been more of like a, let's just like be super honest and like seek yeah. outside counsel. We had our pat like literally yeah. what a few days after Paula Morgan were here, you you know, had our pastor come over. We literally mm-hmm. were sat in our living room for like three hours. Yeah. He was just kind of like a third party listening to like the three hour version of what you saw at the dinner table. Like, but and so much more just trying to like figure out like, okay, what do I need to change? Does he need to change? What if we just can't, like we just see differently. How can we love each other still? How can we <laughs> give each other grace? Um, and it's been like one thing like that after another, I feel. Yeah. So a lot of people are wondering, Dave, to what he sounds like he's deconstructing to what degree, yeah. Um, and you have people that are kind of more like, oh, he's a Christian, but nice. <laughs> or, or he's like, uh, not, he's just compromised his faith or he doesn't have strong faith or, or whatever. Or some people are mad at Paul for like, insane. Mad at Paul for, that yeah. You're deconstructing. Yeah. Which I would say in that case, with Paul and I, we also had more private conversations. And so Paul's operating with more information than what you see in the video. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, get up off Paul, you know, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the, yeah, the bottom line is I had a new level of, uh, like a new level of mental crisis that week that Paul and Morgan were here. And it started before they got here with some random men's group stuff I was doing. And, uh, as well as certain questions that I was asking, even while Paul and Morgan were here, I was asking some people that know me pretty well, or what are my greatest weaknesses? And you know, he was just like, you were inviting I was just going for criticism. it. I was inviting a lot of criticism. I did this thing called, you know, that this like hot seat thing where you sit there and these guys kind of like, you stand or sit there and the, the guys poke at you and try to kind of get, get you to, you know, get provoked. And then we talk about it, you know, talk about what comes up. <laughs> so it was kind of a rough week before Paul and Morgan got there because you were like having all this, like <laughs> inviting all this. For what it's worth, I don't know that I super love this. I know, again, this is kind of a nitpicky thing. But um, it is entirely possible to receive feedback about your weaknesses or areas of growth, uh, things like that, without it sounding like strikingly similar to like cult tactics from the 1970s, right? We are still in the middle of making a video about the travel teen industry. But this immediately piqued my ears because this was a, a topic uh, that came up in the discussion of the um, cult that ended up being somewhat of the basis for AA, which is this like weird game that people would play. It's a whole thing. Um, but it, it is like inherently like a bullying exercise where you poke and prod at people and you like use their greatest uh, vulnerabilities and weaknesses to push at them, which again, I just want to be clear, that's not loving, right? Like I guess if everybody in that situation is consenting to that, like that's different, I suppose. But I just want to point out that it is entirely possible to receive feedback and criticism and, you know, invite opportunities for growth uh, without it looking like that necessarily. Criticism into your life, and you were kind of like, oh. I was grumpy. I was grumpy, and then I found, and then I found, you know, one of the things that got me through. What? For the first time in I don't know, fifteen years, Billy Joel releases a new oh, song. Oh yes, that's right. Basically, what happened from all that is uh, there's a lot of different points that I won't get into because it takes so long. But uh, what basically happened is I got to this point of like, I've been circling deconstruction, just to use the term loosely. I I. I'm okay with the term. I'm not against it. You're not I, against it. I'm not against it at all. I, I think there's this misconception yeah. that I'm against it, but it's more just like when I when you typically hear the term deconstructing, like yeah. I typically think of someone like completely deconstructing from their faith. And yes, I am deconstructing certain parts of my yeah. faith, but I personally am still very much like a believer in Jesus and very much think what the, you know, like trying to understand yeah. the word and living it out practically is important. So I just, I don't want to be labeled. I don't really care for the label, I guess, yeah. but I'm okay with it anyway. Yeah. And my... I'm okay with the term for sure, and I'll often use it. I know it's popular, and it, it's kind of, you know, rings a bell, so it's kind of easy. But um, there's, there are kind of two different types of deconstruction that I think of when it comes to the popular stuff that, that is kind of happening, this trend, yeah. the trend that's happening. And one is it, it's almost like you're consciously deconstructing in, in the sense of you're, um, you're actively questioning beliefs and like, is this true? Yeah, is that yeah, true? Yeah. And it's almost like you're taking things apart. And then there's the kind of deconstruction where people describe it as pulling a thread and and – it's just kind of like the whole thing falls apart. It's like you don't even, you're not even going towards everything. It's just kind of like everything's sort of crumbling and then you're just in this crisis mode and nothing's left. And I would say for me, 
It feels a little bit more towards the first one, but I'm sure there's probably a mix. The things that changed for me. Real quick, before Dave talks more about his deconstruction, I do just want to address this because I can understand that for Bethany, there's an aspect of fear probably, and also a feeling of judgment about using the term deconstruction, right? I think it's important to acknowledge that in this culture, using the word deconstruction, like there is very little nuance, right? For us, obviously, there's a fair amount of nuance as people who have survived deconstruction or moved through that, or like, you know, evolved our values and beliefs about life, obviously there's an easier time acknowledging the nuance there, but in a fundamentalist culture that is predicated upon this black and white perspective of life. Either it's a sin or it's not. Either it's like approved or it's not. There is very little nuance about the term deconstruction. So I can understand why she has a discomfort with saying, uh, you know, I'm deconstructing certain aspects of my faith because Again, we have to contextualize the environment that these people are in, which is that they're like heavily immersed in a very religious and again, very black and white environment. The families that they came from, at least we know for Bethany, her family is still very religiously oriented. And so to say something out loud like this on the internet carries the implication that like, I'm no longer a woman of faith, which would carry a really heavy implication for her familial relationships, for her work at Girl Defined, for her reputation in her community and her um, content verticals, right? Um, all of those things are probably factoring into this discomfort. And so like I can humanize this and also right? <laughs> choosing to reevaluate parts of your values or beliefs or your religious practices is inherently deconstruction, right? Like that is what deconstruction is. Dave mentioned these two, you know, types of deconstruction where a lot of people experience the like pulling the thread thing and then all of a sudden, you know, the house of cards comes tumbling down versus like making this conscious choice to interrogate different values and beliefs and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's important to acknowledge that those are also like real things. But again, I guess mostly the point that I wanna make here is that like both of these people are deconstructing, right? I think Dave has made it to a different part of his deconstruction journey. And it seems like he's also experiencing a whole lot less shame and less fear about that. But it is important to acknowledge that both of these people are in fact deconstructing, which also I wanted to address this because I have been very outspoken in the past about how I don't believe that Bethany or Girl Defined um, were or would ever deconstruct. And I am happy to acknowledge that I was wrong. Clearly that's not true, right? Like she acknowledged on camera that she has deconstructed certain aspects of her faith. Dave obviously is doing quite a bit of deconstruction. We'll talk about that in a second. But I just wanted to acknowledge that again, because because I think it's important to like honor when you're wrong, but also because I think this is like good news in theory, right? Like we talk more deeply in the podcast episode about my indecision in regards to like how to address this moving forward, because knowing that these people are deconstructing, I think there's the possibility for potential good to come out of this situation, right? I have never made content about Girl Defined or Paul and Morgan or, you know, Nate and Sutton or any of these people with the intent or the hope even that they themselves would deconstruct, but rather with the focus of like correcting misinformation and disinformation, providing validation and resources for folks who have already done this work, but to see that this is potentially happening and that they might actually get to a place where they're making less harmful or vitriolic content, um, in my opinion, is a W. There is still, uh, a lot to be said about the harm that's already been caused, the harm that's continuing to be caused. We're gonna get into that later, but again, for what it's worth, I just wanted to address that. Through, through the course of this that weekend with Paul and Morgan, and actually we were at Zach and Kristen's one night and there was some conversation there, and through the course of all this, and then and then these these uh, moments of like surrendering, trying to get, trying to just find my identity in Christ and get strength for, through that, and and uh, to, you know to, to be more emotionally stable and all of this stuff, it basically, something broke. <laughs> That it, over that um, that week, and I just I didn't feel tied down anymore to like basically anything that would keep me from fully questioning my mm. beliefs and my faith when it comes to this stuff. And I even found myself wanting Christianity to not be true, just because of my own personal experiences with trying to do trying to have it be real in my own life, and just the disappointment that I found where it doesn't hasn't my perspective, it hasn't really seemed to help me. It hasn't really seemed to make me any more of a better husband or a better man. It seems like when I do other things that are more taking charge of my own development, it seems like I improve more. And then it seems like when I try to find my identity in Christ, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem to, to work. And I, so I got to this point where it's like, I, I hope this isn't true because I, I, I don't want to go through life always having to think I'm the worst in, you know, in order to find the, the life in Christ. And, and that whole that whole thing where it sort of requires you to feel 
really bad or to at least admit, you know, oh, you, you're just sort of nothing and you have nothing. And so that's why you need Jesus. And isn't it such great news? It's like, it's just stopped being good news for me because it's like, I, this is basically, if it's not working for me, then the answer is always, well, you, like you haven't, like you really need to know God's love more or, um, or, uh, or you're not trusting him or you know, you just need to find your identity in him and rest in that. And so it's like, it just becomes another work, another work. Like, oh, I'm not resting enough. I'm not, why isn't, why isn't this working? It's, you know. So there was some frustration there. On, in addition, first of all, again, there's an aspect of hope in this. I am happy to own also that I am like such a naive little sucker for people just like finding happiness and joy in life. I think that's like part of the therapy thing. I don't know, but I just like truly want to believe that people on the inside are inherently good and have this capacity for a greater understanding of like human, I don't know, like. Uh, like uh, being flawed, right? And at the same time, um, this is a moment that I wanted to talk about specifically because we have talked at length on this channel about the belief that Bethany and Kristen and Allie B. Stuckey and all of these other people pedal pretty heavily, which is that you are inherently broken. You are inherently bad. You are flawed. You are wrong. You are worthless without Christ. And therefore, that's why religion is so cool. That's why Christianity is so great. Um, we've talked at length about how harmful this is and how fucked up this is, right? Like this is also a criticism that it's important to acknowledge has come from like all corners of the earth, right? Like there literally, I don't think is a person in either the like fundamentalist uh, commentary or snark niche, but also just like regular degular people <laughs> that haven't said like, wow, this sucks. Like this belief fucking sucks. This is a reason that a lot of people deconstruct from Christianity and from religion in their own personal lives, right? This requirement that you have to see yourself as being inherently unworthy and bad is a, a problem for a lot of people with this very legalistic uh, application of Christianity. And in my opinion, Bethany and Kristen and, and like the girl defined universe have to be well aware of this by now, except that we didn't develop a, uh, like an understanding or an empathy for why people are making this argument until it happened to them, right? And I, again, I know that people are feeling very hopeful and like very excited about this moment. And again, like I am happy to acknowledge um, that I am a softy on the inside. Um, and so I do genuinely hope that this is a turning of a corner for them and that they're experiencing like a greater amount of joy and, and empathy in life. They seem like they're happier, just the two of them. And that might just, just be because they're, you know, actually being normal on camera rather than it being to do with deconstruction. But I do also feel like I'd be remiss to not acknowledge the circumstances here, which are, I mean, this is like a, a tale as old as time in the like conservative commentary niche, which is the like leopards ate my face thing, right? Like I have no human compassion or empathy or care or concern or respect for the nuance that leads people to certain situations in their lives. And I think that my legalistic approach to morals and values and beliefs and religion should apply to you in all circumstances, irrespective of what your particular situation is, accept that. Should it happen to me, once the shoe is on the other foot, now all of a sudden we care very deeply about nuance. We think it's very important to be having these conversations and to be telling people that you can be a good person, you can be a good man, you can be a good father, you can have a healthy, happy marriage, even if your husband is like deconstructing from Christianity, even if you're not using uh, religion as the vehicle for your self-improvement, right? And like, that's all true. And I'm happy that they've come to that understanding or that they seem to be tiptoeing into that water, and I think there's a valid anger for a lot of people about the hypocrisy here, right? Like this phenomenon of like, I don't give a fuck about your circumstances and I'm going to push you to take my values and belief as gospel, literally, even if it harms you, except that when it's my turn to eat crow that like, I don't like it then is like, it's a button pusher for me. I don't know if this is the autism, if it's like the things need to be a certain way that I feel strongly about things being like, right and correct and like correcting like not factual information or if this is just the like I don't know general feeling of frustration and anger that people experience around hypocrisy I'm not really sure what what my <laughs> particular issue with it is but again I just want to highlight this and also acknowledge and validate that if you're also 
feeling a little bit conflicted um, about this, please know that that's very normal, right? Especially for those of us who have had these beliefs like leveraged at you and that you've been told, right? Like when I left religion, I was told that my marriage would fall apart and that I was inherently bad and that there would be terrible things that happened to me because I was turning my back on the means by which I would become a good person, right? And the truth is that after, after having left religion, my ability to be empathic towards other people, um, my ability to improve myself and to look at my flaws without shame or a feeling of being inherently unworthy has only improved, right? I've become a much fucking better person after I left religion. And it's frustrating to feel like the people who leverage that at you, who like weaponize that against you, would then turn around as soon as it was like not working for them and say like, well, just kidding, <laughs> I changed my mind, right? Like you are very valid and very allowed if you're also experiencing a little bit of frustration about this situation into all the truth claims and all the all the things that have been circling for the last eight years for me, even before we were married, um, you know, all that stuff has been there. I've been very oh, yeah. aware of a lot of uh, arguments and podcasts and people and and debates and all kinds of, of stuff. It's not like I've, I've just been in this community where I, I don't hear influences. It's like I've known a lot about this stuff. For sure. This and wasn't the last and over time, I've learned, I've read more books and I've learned more and I've seen more, you know, and and so but I felt constrained uh, by myself, my own in inability or lack of desire to challenge certain institutions that I'm a part of or challenge certain communities because that would throw things into chaos. That would, you know, it would be hard to go to church. It would be hard to be married to Bethany. It would be hard to do a lot of these, a lot of these things. I'm, I'm established in Christian community. So it just makes it, um, because of my own choice to be in Christian community, it makes it challenging if I'm going to basically say, hey, I don't think I'm a Christian anymore. But um, over the course of the weekend with Paul and Morgan and with... Uh, other people, um, I basically got to a point where I just, it wasn't enough of a reason for me to not take that next step. And for me, it's like just kind of acknowledging all of my questions and doubts just all at once and just being like, actually, I'm not sure this is true. I kind of hope it's not. You know, I say that. Really quick. First of all, I do think it's just a little bit humorous. I don't know that Dave meant it this way on purpose, but just the like, this weekend with Paul and Morgan caused me to officially acknowledge that I've deconstructed from Christianity. It's a little bit funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that Paul and Morgan made Dave deconstruct. It sounds like this was a deep-seated for him or deep-seated thing for him personally throughout his own life that had been, you know, simmering for years. But just the phrasing of it made me laugh. And also, I think it's... I don't know, helpful to, or like, I don't know, like important, I guess, to acknowledge the courage in making a decision like this, right? Like there are people who, I tell my clients this all the time, there are people who go to the grave without ever having the courage to really acknowledge the inner conflicts that they have, or having the courage to look objectively at their lives and say, this was wrong, or this decision was not a good one, or this value or belief that I used to uphold I don't believe that anymore, right? There are a lot of people who are so, I don't know, prideful or fearful um, about acknowledging their flaws and mistakes and, you know, um, changes that they never do that, right? And so I do just want to take a moment to acknowledge that, like, first of all, for you, if you've ever deconstructed, like, please know that this is an inherently brave and self-loving thing to do, right? Like you are so much braver and like better for having been able to sit with that discomfort and do that work for yourself. People will tell you that leaving religion and that deconstructing is a cowardly thing to do and that you're turning your back on the truth and on God. And the truth is that being able to sit with our own, I can't think of the word right now, um, but the like wishy-washy thing, like choosing to look at our own, you know, inability to be like one way or the other is a brave thing to do. So be kind to yourself about that. And also I'm doubtful that but that Beth Bethany or Dave I almost called him Babe Ugh. I'm doubtful that Bethany or Dave will ever see this video but if they do again please know that this is a brave thing to do and I think it's courageous to like not just be doing this work in your own life but to also be acknowledging this publicly knowing that you're probably going to get a bunch of really fucked up comments about it so for what it's worth but it's like that's that's a lot for Bethany to go through yeah well I mean it's I feel like there's a lot packed in there um, it's definitely not just been since like the Paul and Morgan thing. I think, I feel like you've had a new level of boldness or a new level of freedom to share those things since that weekend. But like, you've been studying this stuff and yeah. thinking about this for like years. And in fact, yeah. one year ago, almost one year ago, since it was the time of Lent, but last year I had very similar, I had something like this happen where I had all of these, I was like talking to my pastor yeah. and I was like, I'm not sure I should be taking communion or whatever. And, um, and we had the question of whether to become members and all this stuff. And basically at that time, 
I was still kind of in this, okay, I can kind of like make the leap of faith. And so I just sort of took this leap of like, all right, I can believe, I don't know it. And I can't, you know, this is not so rational, but I'll just like, okay, th that's what faith is. Faith is just kind of, you know, dedicating yourself and, and, and trusting and, you know, okay. So, uh, I can, you know, I say what I believe, even though I don't like feel it. Cause what is belief anyway? You know, and be very, I kind of used just relativism on myself and be like, well, we don't know anyway. So you just might as well dedicate yourself or whatever. And so, okay, all right, I'm a Christian and I can, I can hold this and I can, you know, whatever. And so to be clear, I'm only giggling because I feel like anybody who has walked through deconstruction recognizes this phase where like you're starting to get to the point where you're like, this doesn't feel true anymore, but you tell yourself all of these like backwards um, or like circular things about like, you know, what is belief anyways? And you have this like weird existential crisis about like, how am I supposed to know? And like, who's really to say what a real question is anyways? And maybe it's all meant to be a leap of faith. Maybe this is how it's meant to be, who knows? And so you end up kind of in this like, uh, like this last phase <laughs> deconstruction of like telling yourself that, like, I don't know, maybe if I just like fake it till I make it, then eventually it will feel real. And like, at least for me, it did not. For a lot of people, it does not. Uh, that happened a year ago and I stayed in the Christian community, but as, as kind of like giving assent to this stuff and taking communion and, and being a part of this. And, and so that's what's different now. I basically got to a point where I was like, uh, I don't, I don't need to hold up any of that. I don't need my friends to think that I'm one of them in the sense, in this sense. Um, I don't need people on the internet to think, I mean, that was, that's not really as much of a concern I would say in some ways, but, uh, it's really more like my marriage, my church community, you know, basically the life that I have, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of my work has been in the Christian space, you know, so it's just so much of that. Um, yeah, it feels like I finally got the balls to basically be honest about things that I've thought for a long time. And uh, I apologize to Bethany because, um, I haven't always been honest with her. And when we got married, I had already been, I'd already started deconstruction. Um, and I, I'd read quite a lot fewer books when we got married and had listened to podcasts and stuff and was already very friendly towards certain forms of you know, progressive Christianity and stuff like that. And when I got married to Bethany, I, I thought, well, this is going to be a problem because, you know, yeah. And, and I wanted to, I wanted Bethany. And I love her. And so at the time I was like, this is just going to cause problems in our relationship. So I was just like, all right, I believe God, I believe that the Bible is your word and I accept this authority and blah, blah, blah. And I just kind of tried to push myself over the edge to make it work. And that was disingenuous and a lack of integrity, honestly. And at the time I just, it was, a, it was a weak thing to do. And, um, and I didn't really know how to like stand up and just say, this is what I think mm -hmm. in the face of the anxiety that it could cause both in other people and in myself. Really quick, for what it's worth, I just want to talk about this because I feel like I've been saying really quick for what it's worth every time I pause. But anyways, I want to address this just because there is a lot of shame and fear and anxiety for folks who do, uh, you know, work around deconstructing. And I want to be clear that feeling too afraid or too anxious or too judged to be honest about the doubts that you're having or about, you know, the deconstruction that you're doing isn't weak, right? You're not a weak person. You're not a bad person. That's not like a, a lack of integrity necessarily. I think it's important to normalize that, especially again, in these cultures where there is a pretty swift and severe response for voicing doubt or fears or anxieties, that it would be very normal to struggle to voice that or to be honest about that. And again, this is not necessarily for Dave, but for those of you who are deconstructing or have deconstructed, please know that struggling to speak your truth in a community that is committed to silencing you, sometimes violently so, doesn't make you weak or bad. It doesn't make you dishonest or like a little weasel or anything. It is okay to honor that in that environment, it wasn't safe for you to be honest about who you were and also that you didn't have the tools, right? You may very well have been robbed of the ability to effectively learn how to voice things for yourself or to be honest with yourself or with others, how to disagree with people gracefully, right? In these communities where there's a strong focus on groupthink, you might not have even been given the basic education about how to voice a dissenting opinion, again, because also the retribution for that would have been swift and somewhat violent. So be kind to yourselves. Um, we will all go through phases where we feel more empowered, um, to be honest, or, or like 
not phases in the like, it's not a phase mom, but like phases in the sense of like, like a journey is what I mean. <laughs> in our journey of healing, we will all discover um, skills uh, in regards to our communication and our ability to advocate for ourselves in our own time and space in a way that works for you and that is reflective of the safety and resources that are available to you. So that's kind of changed. And uh, so I've apologized to Bethany. I said, you know, I'm sorry for nice. selling you a picture of myself that's not been true. And, um, and you know, making it seem like I'm, I believe a certain thing or am a certain way in order to make you feel better um, when I'm really not. Mm -hmm. So how's it's more about, how's it been for you? Yeah, I mean, thank you for sharing that. That is a lot to share. Hmm. Does that feel okay to share? Okay? Yeah, I feel like I just kind of rammed through the, <laughs> just kind of like rammed through it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's like a big deal. So that's a huge deal. Yeah. Acknowledge that. It's a big deal to acknowledge it. And, um, I mean, I would say it's it's not something that I... Really quick, I just want to acknowledge this. It's not really quick. This video is like two hours long, Mickey. I do want to acknowledge this moment though, because I think this is sweet, right? There's been a lot of criticism of Bethany oversharing. I have been one of the people who criticizes her for oversharing about her sexual life specifically. Uh, this was an interesting moment to see between the two of them, this like genuine checking in of like, does that feel okay to, okay to share? That's a big thing to share. In my opinion, this is a green flag. And I was shocked, honestly, not just to see this moment happen, but also to see it happen in such a kind and like quiet and tender way. A lot of us, when when we want something to happen, but we also want the people um, involved in that situation to also be okay with it, we have the tendency to do the, that feels okay to share, right? <laughs> thing. And I just thought it was nice that she asked genuinely. There wasn't like a pressure or an expectation attached to the end of that phrase. It was simply just a question of, does that feel okay okay to share? Which again, is nice to see. Would have like, I, I don't think when we got married, I would have thought you were going in this direction for sure. Um, but I think maybe like a year or so into our marriage, um, just your interests and books and what you like to study and stuff. It was like, okay, I think that it was, you know, I could start to see that coming in. Um, but I mean, we've had conversations about this sort of stuff. I, I've, I've not been like totally in the dark um, yeah. for a while now, I would say. Um, so I think that that's definitely been, I wouldn't say you've been like totally dishonest recently, maybe just mm. so <laughs> maybe at the very beginning, <laughs> got the girl <laughs> surprise. <laughs> well, um, I didn't, it wasn't like the next day I was like, surprise, I'm an atheist. <laughs> you just <laughs> did it with the thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people have a lot of questions about that. Like what I, what I think, what you think, what are, how that works in our relationship. Um, I think that we are uniquely gifted to love each other and work through a relationship like this. Um, I think that even though it's hard for me, I, it does not, um, I am not like, I don't know. I just, I have so much love for you and it is emotional. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of people have wondered and have asked like in the questions and stuff how that is. And I am emotional, so we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> or else I'll never finish. Um, I think that, like when I think back to, I think this is something that like I really believe, like when I think back to when we got married, I still look back and it's like, I have so much confidence that we're supposed to be together. And I have so much confidence that we are like super uniquely gifted to like really love each other. And I think we have a, um, like, I think that we, and people have told us like, you know, that we sought counsel from and stuff just have been so encouraging and supportive of how we've been able to like press toward each other and love each other and have these conversations and not just like run away from each other in fear or like separate, but we've been able to like grow. And I, even though it's hard, this big difference of ours now, um, like, I think we love each other more now than we did, you know, three weeks ago, mm. a year ago when we got married, obviously. Yeah. Um, and like, my heart is filled with so much love for you, you know, and I want to be like, I want to be the woman yeah. with you. Like, I, I don't want to be anywhere else, you know, like, I don't want, I don't want a different man. <laughs> like, I want to be with you in this, um, journey, even though it is hard. Um, I just, I want to be with you. Um. But it, it is hard. It's hard to think like, I mean, we are going to church together right now. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I struggle with this a little bit because 
I want to be clear, this is a very sweet moment, right? Again, we talked at the top of the video, um, the like genuine love and care that they seem to have for who the other person is at the core, not just the service that they provide them or the things that they do, but like their core essence as a person, they seem to love that about each other, which is obviously good and sweet. And also there's some stuff in here that is like just, it's a little challenging for me to be perfectly honest because the thing that sticks out to me is this language about like we are uniquely gifted to love each other through something like this, right? Which is, again, it's a sweet sentiment, but I can't help but wonder to what degree, first of all, this would have been something Bethany would have believed pre the shoe being on the other foot, right? If someone had, you know, written in in a Q&A for Kristen and Bethany on a Girl Defined video that like, hey, me and my husband are in a mixed faith marriage. My husband has started deconstructing. I'm still firmly a Christian, but I believe that we truly love each other enough to work through this. And I think he's a good man, regardless of whether he's a man of faith or not. And so like, is that okay? I struggle to believe that Kristen or Bethany would have been like, yeah, that's fine, right? Like we trust and believe that people can really love each other regardless of their faith and their beliefs, right? We trust that he is a good man and a good father and good to you and that it's possible for you guys to really truly love each other. Like, I don't know that that would have been the feedback. I think if we're all being honest with ourselves, the feedback probably would have been some iteration of the like Mr. Struggle thing, right? The like, he's not a real man of God or he's not a real good person. And so therefore you guys need to seek biblical counseling to get him on the same page as you in your faith. I know that that might sound kind of mean, but like, I think it's worth fucking pointing out. And it's just, again, this is one of those things that's like a little bit of a button push for me in the sense that like we are happy to acknowledge that someone can be a good person, a good husband, a good father, that you can be a genuine good match, that you can be genuinely in love and that your relationship can be healthy and happy and also happen to be a mixed faith marriage, right? Now that it's happening to her, but I don't know that this would have been the take if it hadn't been happening to her first. And the conditional empathy, the, um, you know, I only will extend compassion to you if I've experienced how hard this is. It, this is part of why people really dislike fundamentalist religion. This is why people really dislike this type of very legalistic Christianity, which is that there is only, we are only willing to offer empathy to you insofar as it has affected me or like relates to me in my life, right? Which is not real empathy. That's not true empathy or compassion. And it's certainly not true love for your fellow human, right? For your brothers and sisters in Christ. I think that this is worth pointing out. And again, just like if you're experiencing some, ickiness about this hypocrisy. I think you're very valid in that. I think we can, this is a moment I think where it's good to honor that we as human beings are, are complex and we can contain multitudes, right? We can hold in our hands multiple things, which is that this is sweet, that I'm happy for, for Bethany and Dave, honestly, that I hope that they're finding a greater sense of peace and happiness in their life. And also that we've yet to apologize for the harm that we've caused. They stated publicly that they will never do an apology to her. Um, and also that we are happy to honor this nuance in this situation insofar as it relates to Bethany specifically. It's challenging and it's difficult, but again, I think it's just one of those moments where it's important to honor both of those things can be true at the same time and that doesn't make you like a shitty or mean person either if you're also experiencing some kind of like, you know, uh, like not an eye roll, but like a little bit of a cringe at this whole situation. You know, you are leading our family in like a morning devotional. Um, yeah. And... You know, you're just more careful with the words, like you say, like this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible right. teaches. Yeah, I can tell Davy because I'm I'm thrilled if David, you know, Davy's, you know, learning about the Bible and all that. It's like, it's great, you know. Yeah, but I'll I'll say things like, you know, the Bible teaches that God loves us or something like that, uh, rather than like, oh, God loves us. <laughs> I mean, it's really sweet. I think that that's the thing when you hear about like, oh, we're like one couple deconstructs and the other doesn't. Um, at least even having personally having talked to friends and stuff, there can be a lot of um. Like, I don't know, like even just that sort of stuff, like talking about the Bible or talking about Jesus or church mm -hmm. can become like super high tension, but I've appreciated just like your maturity in that way of not being like, well, I'm not doing that or don't, mm -hmm. you know, don't teach the kids about that. You've been just like very, um, at least now like seeing the value in the community of that, um, and just the value of at least our kids being there for now. Um, and I think that, yeah, like Davey has such a genuine interest in like God and in, um, the Bible, and I just really appreciate how you are willing to, you know, like, I don't know, 
feed that interest or whatever. I don't know how you want to say it. Okay, so listen, I know that I was just critical of them two seconds ago, but I, in thinking about this more, I'm also wondering to what degree this sudden ability to grasp the nuance and the complexity of this situation has to do with Bethany being forced to reckon with the reality about deconstruction and like non-believers rather than this caricature that her family and her and her sister have drawn up about non-believers, right? A lot of the rhetoric that we've seen from Girl Defined in the past has been very black or white in the sense that either you are a person of faith who is just like us or you're a godless, heathen, hedonistic, Satanist who hates people and hates babies and like, you know, fornicates in public every Sunday, right? Like there's no in between these two things. And I think the reality of like my husband, this man who I love and who I can see be a good father, who is empathic and kind and, you know, all of these things, is also not a believer though. And so like being forced to reckon with the nuance in that situation will go a long way in deconstructing somebody's own beliefs. This is one. This is the thread pull thing that <laughs> Dave was talking about earlier. This happens for a lot of people in deconstruction. When you're faced with the nuance of this situation rather than forcing yourself to, to live in this very black or white universe where there is no nuance, all of a sudden the, the house of cards can come dump, tumbling down for people about like, Hold on a minute, right? Like I've been told my whole life that if you are a non-believer or if you're not even just my very specific breed of Christianity, that you must be empty inside. You must be rotten from the inside out, right? Like the, the parable of rotten fruit comes to mind. And I think this might have been like a teaching moment for her. Again, I'm still very irritated about the hypocrisy of it all because it really should not take having lived experience in a thing for you to be willing to validate other people's experiences and express empathy or at the very least just a, you know, uh, ambivalence towards other people living a reality that's not true for you. And I'm curious if this is also a side effect of Bethany being forced to reckon with the fact that the real world and like the real nuance in regards to varying levels of faith or Christianity is much more complex than she originally thought. Bring it up. You know, when, you know, every time he does, he brings it up every so often. Oh, hold on. There was something else that I forgot to mention. Especially the reason that I was thinking about this is because she says the thing about how, you know, Dave has been very reasonable and like, you know, oh, you hear these things about how if one person deconstructs but the other doesn't, that they all of a sudden will say, I don't want you teaching that stuff to our kids or I don't want you going to church or all of this stuff. I think this sort of paints a picture of like a person who deconstructs all of a sudden becomes this radicalized, like leftist, communist, anti-religion Satanist who refuses to let anybody in their life be religious. And like, that's not true, right? Like we've been talking about this for ages, which is that you can be a person who is deconstructed from your own religion or disagrees with organized religion generally. And also is just kind of like, hmm. Okay, that's fine. If like faith is something that is important to you and that is helpful to you, then like you can do that for you, right? It is entirely possible to have a healthy and happy marriage where couples have different beliefs about religion or faith um, and that we are still respecting one another's opinions about those things. It's fun, you know? It's great to hear him, him learning stuff and uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, I think that it's more like when I think about it, I guess it's more those fears of like, you know, what exactly does the future look like for us and for this? Because at this point, like we both see ourselves like not, you see yourself more deconstructing and I see myself not <laughs> like in the sense yeah. of like, I see myself like I, I, I just, I don't know. I like being a Christian. Well, I like that trust in the Lord and stuff. I guess maybe it'll be a competition of who can love the other person the best and thereby making the best apologetic, the best <laughs> argument for their view. It's really sweet though, because I, I do have friends who like are in my position of like their husband's trying to deconstruct or whatever. And just like, I just feel like you've been and continue to strive to just like love me so well and be so kind and mm. sensitive and patient. And I am hoping to do the same toward you. Getting up in the morning and being like, oh, I might not be a Christian. Uh, I find, so far... I find a heightened level of like, well, then everything that happens is up to me. It's like my responsibility. Like if I don't like something, it's like, it's on me. It's not, you know, I can't blame God for anything, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just, or, or, and I can't like, I can't like spiritualize things like, oh, maybe God wants this hard thing to be happening to me in order to teach me something and stuff. It's like, if you don't believe in that and you don't, then it's just like, oh, I feel crappy because I feel crappy and whatever. I don't know. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's not. Maybe I need to eat something, maybe whatever. Um, 
and uh, maybe I need to confront myself about uh, about an issue that I have, and I'm not living with my integrity or something. And I still very much hold to that. The integrity stuff hasn't gone away. I would say yeah. this is a step in the in- direction of more integrity, more honesty, even more strength in a lot of ways. I would say, and uh, I've been like, well, we can get into some of the comments and stuff in the video, but there were there was one a couple comments in particular that yeah. uh, really really landed with me, and that I, you know. I've been taking as fuel to be able to grow and, and yeah. do a lot better. I think this is hopeful um, because what Dave is saying is true for a lot of people about deconstruction, right? Which is that leaving religion gives you the space to be a better version of yourself. That's stronger. That's more honest. That's more uh, focus on integrity or empathy or, you know, genuine respect for fellow human beings. Um, and acknowledging the truth in that, I think is probably a little bit distressing for Bethany, if I had to guess. Um, but again, seems to be adding up to this greater picture of like potentially learning and like, I'm fucking really hoping, expressing a greater empathy for people who don't think and feel and behave and look exactly like Bethany and Dave. Like I'm very hopeful that this will be a turning point for her in being able to honor and acknowledge that there are people who don't believe in the very specific brand of Christianity that Bethy believes in. And also they might be good people, right? They, it might be okay for them to be that way. And maybe we don't have to make content all the time that is geared towards being quite so hateful and aggressive and like prescriptive. I mean, just from like wrapping this up because I know a lot no. a lot of people are asking questions about this part mm-hmm. like this like people are asking like what are like what more are the differences so he uses language mm-hmm. and you don't it's like yeah, the cussing should probably be the least of your worries <laughs> at this point it's more of like our difference in our faith journey our belief in Christ and the word and like all of that um and yeah like it's tough like it's I'm you know not gonna pretend like I'm some superwoman and just like oh uh, it's like it's hard and it's um it's just like like it is a lot, you know, but I, I, you know, I want to, I, I think I was telling you today, like I, we have so many things that we, like, even just when I think back to like, I don't know, dating or whatever, it's like, just like the stuff we love to do together, the, the unique relationship we have. Um, I mean, that's one of the reasons, like from the beginning, when we started dating, I was like, I want to do YouTube with you (laughs) because I just, (laughs) this is going to sound so selfish, but it's like, I love our relationship. And I think we're like a super special couple. (laughs) Like, I just think we have like a willingness to be real and open and like not putting on a show and just like, um, just really like a fun relationship. Mm. And I just think that not in like a teaching sense, but just Mm. like in a sharing our life sense, that's Mm. something that I just, um, have really loved Mm. about us. And so it's like, yeah, would it be awesome if we both just like shared the same faith, like super strongly and just were like, yeah. both felt so encouraged by that with each other. Yeah. Of course. I think we'd both love that, you know, whatever that. Yeah. Being on the same page. Yeah. That'd be, that'd if be I fun. were like, yes, deconstruction, babe. I don't know. I mean, it, it might've crossed my mind. <laughs> okay. Um, and if I, I just, I'll just have to make deconstruction look absolutely attractive. Just like the most loving husband. So yeah, I, I mean, I would say that, you know, in a year, I'm sure we'll have a lot more to say. Oh man. Can you imagine? I do just want to put it out there. Um, this is something that we have said about Girl Defined and other fundamentalist influencers from the beginning, which is that I think there is a world where sharing about their own experiences, their own thoughts, how they apply certain pieces of doctrine or the Bible or scripture to their own lives seems like a much less hateful fit for the things that they want to share, right? A lot of the issue that I take with Girl Defined, Paul and Morgan, Nate and Sutton, and like, I don't know, whoever else is in the the fundy influencer niche is that they position themselves as experts. They position themselves as these people who are not just qualified, but like they are uh, supposed to be educating other people about the definitively correct way to live their lives, which is not true, right? I think if Bethany and Dave make a shift to talking about their own lives, how they're addressing a mixed faith relationship, how they're managing, I don't know, life changes, uh, child rearing, please don't fucking become family vloggers and put your kids on camera, but like other things um, and just sharing about that journey for themselves that there's so much value in that, right? Like that's very encouraging for people who are also in mixed faith relationships, but also for like sharing the things that they want to be sharing, right? Like I'm not saying that no one should talk about Christianity or that no one should be allowed to share 
hear about religion. We've talked before on this channel about how religion, when approached with a, a healthy and safe attitude, can be such a powerful vehicle in caring for your mental health and creating community. It can be a protective factor for not just your mental health, but also your physical health. There are lots of wonderful benefits to a spirituality that is safe, that provides you with a secure attachment to your deity of choice, and that, again, can add a whole bunch of positive things into your life. And so if that's something that's coming down the pike, I'm hopeful that it is. Um, I think that would be, a, again, a much better fit for the things that they want to be sharing rather than Bethany and Kristen putting themselves up on high and like literally preaching from this pulpit that they do not possess to speak prescriptively about what other people should and should not be doing. And then if you don't do it my exact way, then they're, you're damned for eternity, right? Like that's in my opinion, again, just like not a safe or healthy thing to do, um, but also like not true, right? Like they're not credentialed. They're not experienced enough to be speaking definitively about other people's lives. And I personally would be really excited to see them talking about themselves rather than finger pointing at everybody else. What happened in a week? Yeah. What is going to happen like, in a year? I, I, I mean, I just, it's like, I love our kids. I love oh, you. Yeah. I love the life we're building together. Yeah. I have so much excitement for just the family that we've been given potentially in the future more, you know, it's like, just like the adventures. Like we've have so many dreams of like places we want to travel, mm, things yeah. we want to do together. Just like the kind of kids we're It's just all like going that. to Costa Rica. <laughs> Maybe it's just so special. So yeah, you know, I think you have to look at your life and anyone at any time. I mean, there are people who have a lot more in common than the two of us and who are way more miserable, you know, mm. it's like, we mm. don't have that in common right now, but the way that's that not a high bar to be clear, but she's not wrong. I suppose that we, I don't know. It's just like your focus and yeah. where you're going and what you're doing. And I just, that's, at least that's what I choose to do. Okay. I want to say Bethany, by far the highlight of the highlights of 24 hours with Bethany was Bethany. No. Paul and Morgan were great, of course. And, uh, but, but I just, and Be Bethany was, you were stunning. <laughs> and just the, the kindness that you showed and the, the, just your, understanding heart and your um, ability to handle all the differences that we have and still speak in such a, you know, uh, just a lovely way about me and about our relationship. It was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for Bethany and her, she's, she's really blown me away with just her, her kindness and her, um, her open heart. And, uh, I love you so much. You're a, you're a hell of a woman. Babe. She likes, she likes it a little bit. No, no I just... Um, listen, I'm not going to say that there's not aspects of this video that aren't a little bit cringy because there are, obviously. But I, listen, we all know that I'm just a sucker, that I just love love. And I hope that this is genuine, honestly. Also, for what it's worth, it's very clear that, like, verbal affirmation or praise or compliments, those things feel important to Bethany. Like, she literally lit up when this man started saying nice things to her. And so just as a side note, um, notice this about your own partner or just the people in your life generally. If there seems to be a particular way of engaging with them that causes them to do this thing, do more of that, right? Like, that's a vehicle for connection. <laughs> that's a way to really foster and grow your relationships with one another. Just simply being observant about what your partner seems to respond to can go such a long way in creating that sense of mutual bond and safety with your partner. So just, like, notice those things. You love it. <laughs> this is, here's the deal. It's like, this is my man, you know? <laughs> like, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, I'm not, I'm just not one of those wives where I'm gonna be like, I don't, I don't use language. Every time you use language, I'm going to give you the cold shoulder to show you not. It's like, you're nah, my man. I love too you. too much fun for that. I'm going to, you know, it's like, I'm just going to accept you the way, just like you do for me. I do things that you don't like and you accept me. And just like, so it's like, you can either give the cold shoulder. So can we channel that energy for everyone else? <laughs> can we do that for everybody else? Maybe like that. I'm just, I'm hoping and praying. I'm crossing all of my appendages that we're going to extend that uh, level of uh, acceptance for people outside of their marriage in 2024. Or laugh along and come on, come on, fall more in love. It's like fall okay. more in love. Here, yeah. So <laughs> here's the oh, it bumped a tiny little hair in my nose. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Okay, you want to talk about comments? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about, oh, I'm just not gonna address that. <laughs> oh my gosh, did I really? I think it broke my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about comments. Okay, the comments. We have, we have been known to sit in our bed and scroll comments and 
laugh our heads off because some of this stuff is so funny. Man, people, they just... Well, okay, I, I, I've i loved all the comments, like, people just, like, feeling like they saw a new side of us, mm-hmm. gaining yeah, of a course. new, of yeah, course, a lot like, of just nice, genuine all comments. the nice, genuine comments, you know, really love yeah. those, but I just think it's hilarious how almost every single person in the comments, like, picks someone they want to side with, uh-huh. that's just so funny to me, like, I like this person, I like that, I don't like that, it's just, like, everyone's got their, their person. I, I know, one of my favorite comments on me is, Dave is a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call people sociopaths, please. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so when it comes to the comments, the places that I've looked at comments are the Instagram reels, like that Paul and Morgan post and that we've collabed on. There's like a lot of comments on those, like snippets from okay. the video. Yeah. And then obviously like the main Paul and Morgan 24 hours with, that has a lot of comments. And then they did a reaction video to their own video. To their video. And that was fun to watch. Um, and yeah, they have their, the comments so on there. And the only other video I've watched about this video, thanks to your recommendation, (laughs) is the Zelf on the Shelf video (sighs) with Sam and and Tanner. Tanner. Samantha and Tanner. Shout out to Samantha and Tanner of Zelf on the Shelf. They're two beautiful people. And the world is better for them. <laughs> I had never heard of them. I don't watch like any. Dave being a fan of a fundamentalist commentary uh, YouTube channel is not something that I had on my bingo card for 2024. But for what it's worth, Sam and Tanner at Zelf on the Shelf are actually seemingly pretty nice people. I've never like actually talked to them, but we're mutuals on Instagram and I've watched a couple of their videos and they seem pretty nice. So also if you're looking for more content in the like fundy commentary niche definitely check out their channel because they're uh, a fun watch anything on youtube like any videos about me about girl define like people might be like that's the main critic of girl define and it's like i have never heard of them because i literally do not spend any time on reddit any time on youtube like, you're not saying zelf on the shelf is the main critic no no no, no 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 i'm just saying like i don't know a lot about it so zelf on right. the shelf has made videos about girl define i never heard of them and this is true because I, I think some people do think like you watch reaction videos and stuff like that or you're or you're scrolling reddit or something and it's just it's not no. it's not that way i it's like i need, don't yeah she, for what it's worth it's very bad for your mental health to be doing this take it from me <laughs> there is something to be said for being open to feedback from your community uh, but some of the best advice that i've ever gotten about comments and like critical commentary of your content is to be you know aware and responsive to your comment section and to feedback from your community for like the first 24 to 48 hours and after that let it go. Let it go. Once it leaves the sphere of people who are actually committed to being in your community, who actually are going to give you feedback based on like a, a genuine care or compassion for like your growth and like are giving you commentary about like how to improve from a, you know, like good faith place. Once it leaves that sphere of the internet, there's only anxiety to be had. Don't get me wrong. I think it's very important for people to be aware of like when they fuck up and to honor that like truthfully and, you know, with humility. And also I can't really fault them, honestly. Like I wouldn't scroll a subreddit that hated me. I, like if I'm being super honest, I wouldn't fucking do that either. Just not watch this stuff. But the and main, I don't watch, I, I, yeah, I would watch either. hardly any of it. It's just that happened to be. How'd like, you come across this Elf on the Shelf video? It was because I was It was only was like a few days ago you found it. It was like a couple, like a week or a two week ago. A week ago? Okay, yeah, it, was it wasn't week. that long ago. So, because we were going to meet with our pastor and I was doing some, I was thinking, okay, what are what are the things that I want to bring up? And so I was kind of Googling like Girl Defined videos. So I was watching, I was listening to like Girl Defined videos and then some of the reaction stuff and I stumbled upon Zelf on the Shelf. It was like so funny. the top, it was a top, something. And it was, it was the, oh. the hooks because it was like. Was it one with you? Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was seeing your face. It was like the Barbie review and the, uh, yeah, our conversation stuff. And <laughs> you were like, that's me. Like that's, that's me. And then I started listening to it and I was, yeah, I kind of got hooked on Zelf on the Shelf. Because yeah. you were like, these people worship the ground I walk on. No. Yes, they well, do. I, it doesn't, I like them. <laughs> I do too. I get I it. I think they're super. I'm sure that has nothing to do with the fact that Zelf on the Shelf has been incredibly kind to Dave. Definitely has nothing to do with that whatsoever. Nice. And I, yes, I just, I feel very, much, a lot of affirmation from them. And, and that's, that's very sweet. But, uh, and, um, yeah, no, no and. And I like these people. Okay. Um, so he was like, oh, you, you know, like they seem cool. You would probably like them, whatever. So this, this is just a side tangent. So then I was like, okay, I don't watch like any, that's like Paul and Morgan's reaction was the only thing I was planning on watching. I don't Google, I don't YouTube, I don't look at anything, but that specific one, I like went straight to the channel and I was like, okay, I'll watch it. And I definitely appreciate their like kind, gracious way they went about like discussing it and stuff. They call themselves like ex-Mormons or they are ex-Mormons mm-hmm. or anyway. So I think they're a good representation of like unpacking um, a video in a kind, gracious way. At least that one. At least that video of theirs. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you went to watch some of the other ones. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that vein, I don't think we talked about it in here, but hater, t- hater, hater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Critic. Okay. Just dream with me for a little bit. 
we have we we can often talk past each other because when we talk about how to deal with um, like in our di- dinner table conversation in the 24 hours of the video, we talked about the mm-hmm. haters or critics and people. And when one person's thinking about haters, they're thinking about the people trying to actively remove you from social media and get you banned and, and yeah. coming after you and giving you death threats and all kinds of terrible things. And then somebody else might be thinking, oh, somebody who has a different point of view who is pointing out that they think your view is harmful and stuff like that. So critic levels, maybe hater, maybe hater is the, is the premium package where it's like the, the platinum, the, <laughs> we have a wonderful platinum package to offer you <laughs> and, and the platinum package is, uh, you know, full on hater of that nature. And then level one is, um, you know, the bronze package, which is like, uh, or silver, which is, um. I don't know, just like just like somebody who disagrees with views, thinks your views are harmful, or something like that. That would be self on the shelf. They would be level they one. They would be level one. They definitely disagree. And we have a different. We actually have a difference of opinion. Well, that's that's they they think that your views are. Yes, this is so uh, self absorbed. But I'm so curious where I would end up on this spectrum. I feel like probably they would think I'm closer to the hater end of things. But I am really curious, like where they would rank all of the people in this commentary niche, because also it seems like Bethany's rating of this is a lot more. Um, stringent <laughs> Dave's is. That, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so they would so, be they would be level one, which would be more of like a critic, not a hater. I wouldn't put them in the hater camp at all. Right, they're not a hater. Yeah. I think it's pronounced friend, but... <laughs> but well, a, <laughs> <it goes>. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, you're not an unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but like, you know, you know, they would be in that level one of like being critical critic and thinking some views are like, oh, these are hateful, damaging to the world, while also mm. plummeting the depths, they plummet the depths of the Reddit and sometimes repeat things that are completely false and untrue. And so it's like... <laughs> um, Reddit, Reddit adjacent. Yeah, which is just, <laughs> that part is unfortunate to me. It's like, oh, you know, like a channel like that, I do think they have so much going for them. And it's a little unfortunate to me when it's like, okay, why are you repeating some of these major talking points that are so completely false um, without like for sure knowing? So it's like, I really appreciate when channels on that level who are critics, it's easier to listen and to really accept like that feedback when they don't like repeat the random mm. talking points, which not in the most recent video, but you know, in some previous We both watched the most recent video today together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people always ask like, do you have any friends? Oh, I'm not. It's what? just like you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> people are always like, do you not have, do you have any friends who aren't just like you? And here's the reality oh. though. Like we are super open to like having friends who think differently for heck. I married you and you're heck. <laughs> you heard it here heck. folks it's like I married you and I still love you and I we yeah. have a- I don't know that that counts because she didn't know that at the time so like okay last and together she, she's not an idiot like Bethany knew from the beginning that I was kind of not cookie cutter no you weren't that's what attracted me to you for sure it's like, just hey, like babe. I can welcome you to the dark side. Come no. me, babe. I, I didn't think you were going down a deconstruction route, I, but I, yeah, and I really right. admired your um, integrity, which was yeah. one of the things that I've talked over and over again is what I've loved most about you. Yeah. And it's your integrity that is taking you down which this is path of deconstruction. It's so it's like, irony. Yeah, yeah, which is I a still, good thing. I, you know, I choose you today, babe. I did get some positive comments on um, the 24 hours of the video for me personally. And Bethany got a lot of positive comments and just our relationship and, you have just a range, but I think again, I think Bethany's is the shining, uh, the, the CBO? a shining star. One of the things that came up in the comments was there's a, a comment um, that had to do with my behavior and just making the observation that I seem to be taking little subtle digs at Bethany and kind of at her expense and sort of like siding with the outsiders and and this this uh you know rem- uh, reminding this person of this narcissistic behavior that she saw in her father or something like that. It was like a whole big comment. Just a big comment. It was a couple comments, I guess. And, um, and just hearing that, just like, wow, I've never seen someone who exhibited the traits of my father quite like Dave, you know, that this narcissistic kind of traits. He didn't say I was a narcissist, but, and, uh, and I read that and thought about it and I was like, well, I definitely have been like that in the, in the sense of, taking little digs or, or making fun of Bethany in, in subtle ways, you know, at her expense, um, you know, snarking and stuff. And I felt like when I looked inside myself, I saw, tra- I see traits like that. These sort of, these narcissistic traits of like, you know, needing someone to be less than in order for me to feel better about myself. And, um, and those are just traits that I just, I really don't like, and I really don't want those there. And over, um, it was this last or a weekend ago, a week ago, um, we were with some friends and I made some comment. I was just making some comments. I was just being flippant. I was being flippant about deconstruction. I was just, you know, being flippant with Bethany and, and, um, it just, it just you know, sort of little things at her expense, little put downs and things at her expense. And 
man, that's just the worst. That's just the worst behavior. And I, um, anyway, and so this comment calls me out and I see a lot of those traits at times. Uh, it's been something that I've been working on. However, I can, I could still see some more recent. And so I am taking that very seriously. And I've used that comment, uh, I think for good as almost like rocket fuel to, to really kind of motivate me when I read it, it doesn't feel very good, but it really helps me to confront myself and, and say, okay, this, uh, to the degree that I exhibit this behavior, this has got to stop. This has got to stop. I mean, call me surprised um, at anybody in this content vertical being willing to take feedback from people. For what it's worth, please don't call people narcissists. I don't know what comment they're referring to. It's entirely possible that that person was speaking about their father who was a diagnosed clinical narcissist. But just for what it's worth, our culture lately has been really fixated on like labeling people as narcissists uh, without like, evidence about that for what it's worth uh narcissist uh or narcissistic personality disorder is a clinical diagnosis that ideally is coming from a therapist and also it's important to acknowledge that people can have personality disorders even cluster b personality disorders and be doing the work be good people who are like on the the journey towards healing and are really making a conscientious effort to be the best versions of themselves who are safe in relationships and all those things just because somebody has an npd diagnosis doesn't mean that they are like a serial killer or a terrible person um there's a world of nuance about that diagnosis so just keep that in mind stop stop <laughs> this has got to stop and this will stop and i so i wrote a bunch of commitments for myself of, of how i mm. speak about bethany and um and this is good this I is think, nice there's a way to have opinions and at the same time to not come with any type of energy that's snarking yeah. on her from from me and and, and actually it, it even extends to other things like as i started to confront myself on the, the narcissistic traits <laughs> um uh, and, and I mean, people disagree. Well, it's not narcissism, but it's like, yeah, but I'm using it fairly loosely and just, you just go with it. Um, as I confront myself on this, I notice there are other benefits as well. Like I don't have to put other people down as much. It's not just Bethany. It's like other guys, for example. And I just remember this quote. I heard this great quote. A strong man doesn't need a weak man in order to feel strong. It's like a strong person doesn't need a weak person in order to feel strong. That is just so good because so often what I've, what I have done in my life out of insecurity is put other people down and through often through joking and snarking and things where it's like, well, I wasn't being mean, but it's like, yeah, but there's like an edge to it. And, um, I've done that so often, not out of a place of friendship. I think there's a way to take digs at people where you're really like rooting for them and you really want them to do well. And you're just being friends and you're totally. just like ribbing each other and stuff. And I think even in marriage, you could, you know, like there's, there's a place for teasing and, and stuff like that, but I, I know the difference. <laughs> and uh, what I'm talking about is, is something that I don't want to do to, with Bethany, and I really don't want to do with anybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak about other people um, in, in that kind of put down sort of way that wants to put myself above them. Um, I think this is a really brave thing to admit on the internet, honestly, <laughs> especially knowing that there are people who are committed to character assassinating them. I think this is an interesting thing to admit out loud, but I'm not mad at this, right? Like, I think this is also um, a byproduct of deconstruction, which is that we are forced to look at ourselves and really evaluate, like, what parts of myself am I happy with and what parts of myself would I like to see grow, which, again, is why we as a culture should really regard deconstruction and the courage that's required to consciously change our belief systems about the world as a brave and, um, you know, strong thing to do. But yeah, I don't know. I was surprised by this and I'm like, like I don't know, pleasantly so, I guess. And so I'm making, making some big changes uh, and it feels good to, yeah. to confront myself. But that was probably my favorite as the, the, you know, probably for me, it's like the worst comment to read and to see, but the one that I can probably use the most. <laughs> I still, I never saw that comment, the narcissist yeah. one. And like, you were like, it's there and I'm gonna look, I just like, I'm blind to it. I cannot yeah. see that comment. You would tell me about different comments. I couldn't see yeah, it. But mouthful. I, you know, I appreciate the way that you are, um, you know, choosing to not do that with me specifically. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I like nice. to not be not that do way. that. Why you make every time, honestly, every time I try to do something fun, you make it not that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which why, is something. Why? There's so much. Wait, what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? I hate so much, <laughs> so much about the things you choose to be. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that's a quote from I something. I want to shout out to the Zelf on the Shelf. They have a lot of quotable lines that were funny that we've been quoting. Oh. Please address Paul attacking Dave afterwards. Paul loves to act like the best Christian and as if he knows all, but there is no such thing as the best Christian and Dave's journey seems to be going well, all this stuff. <laughs> so hopefully this video clears a lot of that up because you are so. owning... Yeah. Okay, listen, there's like six minutes left of this video and we have watched most of it and I'm gonna call it. Um, I 
feel like you guys get it. Listen, I have voiced a lot of my own thoughts about this whole deconstruction journey that Dave and Bethany to a lesser degree seem to be on. I do just wanna be clear. I think again, this is one of those moments where it's important for us to hold in both hands that there are multiple and sometimes conflicting things that are true at the same time, which is that I think the deconstructing and the further investigation of their own beliefs and thoughts and behaviors is good, is important, has the potential to lead somewhere positive, and also that there is definitely an aspect of hypocrisy and like the rules for thee but not for me thing at play here, which is like a button pusher, not just for me, but I'm sure for other people who have survived things like this. And so again, I just wanna validate that like, this is something that we can, you know, wish the best from afar and also like not be fans of these people, right? I think that's totally fair to say. For what it's worth also, like I can to somewhat of a degree like humanize the difficulty that like, especially somebody like Bethany might be experiencing with the pressure to apologize for the harm that she's caused. Um, obviously this is not the same because when I deconstructed from religion, I wasn't a content creator and I also didn't weaponize my religion to teach people on the internet about it. I didn't uh, inflict harm nearly to the degree um, that Bethany and Kristen have with their like, you know, internet career. But in reflecting about this video and like, you know, the, the general theme here, if I'm really honest with myself, I don't think that I would have apologized. Like for the, the people that I had like hurt by trying to spread my religion or talk about my beliefs or whatever, I don't think that I would have apologized either. I would have told people to go fuck themselves if they asked me for an apology for the things that I had believed, believed, believed. And so I can, again, I can humanize that to somewhat of a degree. Again, I don't think that it's the same because Bethany and Kristen have made a living by peddling these really harmful beliefs, um, these dangerous beliefs, and also that they are continuing to do that, right? So that's like not the same. But again, for what it's worth, I can sort of humanize that in a way and I can understand why they might feel the way that they do, even if I don't agree with their choice to do that. I would, I mean, I'm still holding out hope for an apology or some kind of fucking reparations for the harm that they've caused, for the danger that they've put people in, for the way that they have intentionally targeted vulnerable people in some of the worst moments of their lives to try to brainwash them into believing this very legalistic and dangerous perspective about religion and life and Christianity. But I suppose I'm not really like super hopeful about it, but we'll see. All of that said, I hope that you guys enjoy the video. I know that this will bring up thoughts and feelings for people. So definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys have uh, opinions or things that you um, would like to further discuss, I'm always happy to do that. In the meantime, if you like the video, you can like the video, subscribe to the channel. We do make stuff like this. We also make an educational moment that I'd love to have you stay for. And then you can share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.